الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد رسول الله والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل صدق الله العظيم علماء كرام respected brothers and sisters at the madrasa last week we were discussing one hadith of nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he mentioned that when my ummah will indulge in 15 actions or deeds then Allah Ta'ala will send down his azab upon them the azab will be of different kind we discussed a little more than half of that hadith and we are going to complete that tonight but I mentioned in some or many majlises of mine that these majlises are not really planned whatever Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala puts into my mind Sometimes it happens that just a few minutes before coming here, something comes into my mind very, very strongly. And I believe that Allah Ta'ala puts it for the benefit of myself or somebody else. So then I should discuss that. So majlis is not something that we have a fixed topic. So if we leave out some part of some hadith sharif, then inshallah if Allah Ta'ala gives life and an opportunity, we will discuss it again at some other majlis. So tonight again... we will switch over to another hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam or another hadith which is reported in authentic books which I found to be very very interesting and at the same time it is relevant so we will discuss this in tonight's majlis throughout the ages it has been the nature of man you will find always throughout history <coughs> groups of people who will oppose what we term as haq they will always be a group of batil right from nabi alayhi salatu wasalam time up till now until the day of qiyama there will be groups of haq on haq and there will be those on batil and this war will continue because if there was no batil then you would not have been able to attain the sawab and the reward of jihad you would not have been able to attain the sawab of tabligh and ta'lim you would not have been able to invite people towards the deen of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala connect them with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and get the best of rewards of this world and the akhirah so there is hikmat of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wisdom of Allah ta'ala that he has kept in all ages people on haq and people on batil however we should not say that it is allah tabaraka wa taala's decision it is his wisdom and he decided on that so therefore those who are on batil they have got no ex- i mean they've got an excuse to say on the day of qiyama that oh allah it was your decision to create two groups so if you created me from the batil group then why should i be blamed nauzu billahi min zalik because no one in this world knows no one in this world knows about allah tabarak wa taala's decision yes. and allah taala does not force anyone allah taala in other words knew beforehand that this person in spite of the intelligence that i will give him in spite of the quranic verses that will be recited to him in spite of the beautiful character and the wonderful example of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam being before him still he will not come on to haq and sirat al mustaqim so then allah taala stamps their heart and he seals their heart 
then nothing affects those hearts. So it is not that Allah Ta'ala forced them to do that. Otherwise Allah Ta'ala would not have sent 124,000 Nabis to the world. He would not have revealed the books. He would not have sent people to guide people. So our duty is to find the path that is of righteousness, of haqq, of sirat and mustaqim and then tread on that. So this is something that has gone on through the ages. There were also people and there will remain people who will tell others that don't go to those of haqq. There will be those on batil, falsehood. They will prevent people from going towards or in the company of those who are on haqq. They will say if you go in their company, you will become crooked. You will lose the way. You will become, you will go astray. So this has carried on. Now let us look at this incident reported in authentic books. Hazrat ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ne farmaya ke shaam mein ek yahudi rehta tha. Hazrat ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that in Syria there was a Jewish person. Wo sanichar ko taurat padha karta tha Every Saturday, he used to read the Torah. We know that Saturday is a blessed day for the Jews, as Juma is a Mubarak day for the believers, for the Muslims. Then Saturday is for the Jews and Sunday for the Christians. So on Saturday morning, he used to read the Torah. He had made it his habit to read the Torah every Saturday. So on Saturday morning, he used to read the Torah. He had made it his habit to read the Tawrath every Saturday. Jab usne usse khola aur dekha to usme chaar jaga Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki naat aur sifat aur khuliya likha hua paya. When he opened the Tawrath on a Saturday morning, he found in four places the mention of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, his character, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam's akhlaq, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam's beauty, Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam's jamal and kamal. In the Tawrat he found it in four places. But the enmity of the Jews we all know very well. So he could not tolerate seeing in four places in the Tawrat, in that particular recitation of his on that particular Saturday morning, the mention of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in four places. So he decided to tear up those four quotations. He cut them out from the Torah and he burned them up. Chunache usne usko kaat kar jala diya. Phir jab dusra asani charaya to usse Usi Tawrat ke andar aath jaga Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki naat o sifat mili. He destroyed four places. He tore up four places. The next Saturday when he opened the Tawrat and started reading, he found in eight places again the mention of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we must understand that Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, his mention was made in all previous books. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَ تُؤْذُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ The gist and the meaning of which is when Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam told to his people Ya قَوْمُ O my people why are you troubling me? Why are you insulting me? Why are you causing me such hurt and injury? Whereas you know fully well that I am the messenger of Allah Taala sent to you. You know that I am the messenger of Allah. Then why are you becoming rebellious? Why are you not listening? Why are you causing me so much of pain and grief and trouble? and insult and injury. فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they deviated, 
when they went crooked, then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala caused their hearts to go crooked. So from this we learn that when they purposely deviated, when they went crooked, they did not want to listen to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Then that protection which was over their hearts, that protection Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala withdrew, now they become completely crooked and gone astray, and they become devious. A lesson in there for us, that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gives the tawfiq of tawbah many, many times. A person is committing sin, Allah Ta'ala gives him tawfiq of tawbah. He commits sin again, Allah Ta'ala gives him tawfiq of tawbah. So then he begins to believe, because Allah is not sending any azab of any kind. He is making tawbah and Allah Ta'ala is accepting his tawbah and protecting him from his azab. So this person now believes that to sin on the strength of the ayat of the Qur'an Sharif, that Allah is ghafoorul rahim is perfectly acceptable. Now no doubt Allah Ta'ala is ghafoorul rahim and He has kept the doors of Tawbah open until the Day of Judgment. Allah Ta'ala has kept the doors of Tawbah open for a person until his dying day. But now instead of that tawfiq of Tawbah causing him or instead of that ayat making him give up that sin after, commit, after making Tawbah, to give up that sin Instead of that, he uses that same ayat of the Qur'an Sharif to continue. He becomes persistent. Instead of saying that Allah was so ghafoorul rahim that accidentally I committed the sin, but he forgave me, he gave me the tawfiq of tawbah. So therefore, I'm not going to displease him anymore. But he uses that same ayat and says, Allah is ghafoorul rahim So what does it matter? I will continue committing zina. I will continue going to the gambling den. I will continue doing all the haram because Allah is ghafoorul rahim that was not what the Sahaba understood of this verse. So here when they themselves decided that we are not going to accept Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam advices, his nasihat, Allah wa ta'ala also let them then go astray. Allah ta'ala does not give guidance to the fasiqeen. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاةِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ This is what they say. Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, he told to his people, إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ I am the messenger of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala sent to you. I am confirming that which is before me, that is of the Tawrat, the laws of the Tawrat. I am confirming that. And I am also giving a glad tiding of a Nabi that is to come after me, whose name is going to be Ahmad. When rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but when he came with a clear sign, then what did they say? Sihrum Mubi. This is sorcery. So Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam's mention was made in the Tawrat. His name was mentioned in the Injil. His main name was mentioned in all the previous scriptures and books. But due to enmity, due to hatred, due to jealousy, due to envy, they tried to suppress, they tried to conceal, they tried to hide. But when Allah wa ta'ala decides to make a person shine, then no matter how much effort they may make to conceal and hide, Allah Ta'ala's will will become dominant. Yes. Then no matter how much effort they may make to conceal and hide, Allah Ta'ala's will will become dominant. Yes. So here also this Yahudi, he destroyed it in four places. The next reading of his Tawrat on the Saturday morning, he saw it in eight places. Usne un jago ko bhi kaat diya aur jala diya. Jab tisri sanichar ko usne Tawrat khola to usko bara jaga Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki naat mili aur sifat mili the third Saturday. Because his time for hidayat had come. Allah Ta'ala wanted to give him hidayah. So the third Saturday now he found in 12 places. Allah. Now how much is he going to go on cutting and destroying? When he found it in, the, in 12 places, now he got a little concerned. Ab ye fikar aur taraddud mein pad gaya ke agar isi tarah mein na to sifat-e rasul ko taurat se kaatta aur jalata raha 
تو ساری تورات ہی ان کی نات ہو جائے گی اسے ہاؤ مچ ایم آئی گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک آؤٹ فرام دس تورات آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پریز نبی علیہ اصلاۃ وسلام اسٹیٹس نبی علیہ اصلاۃ وسلام نبوت If I'm going to carry on like this, Allah Ta'ala will make me find it in more and more places. So now he got concerned that who is this Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that so many places he has been mentioned in the Tawrat. You must remember that, that what is in, at present in the hands of the Jews and Christians of the Tawrat and the Injil, everyone knows that it is not the original and there's so much of interpolation, so much of changes, so much of additions has taken place. So in the original there was mention of Nabi alayhi salatu islam in so many places. Chunache usne apne dosto se dariyaft kiya ki ye Muhammad koon hai sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So now he started finding out from the people that who is this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Logo ne bataya ki wo ek jhoothe aadmi hai. Tumhare liye behtar hai ki na tum unhe dekho aur na wo tumko dekhe. Wo Makkah Sharif mein hai. So they told him that it is better in Medina Sharif, it is, that it is better that neither you see him nor, nor he sees you because he is a liar. Nauza billahi min zali. This is what they did. They said somebody said he is a liar, somebody said he is a poet, somebody said he is a magician, somebody said he is a madman. Nauza billahi min zali. So in our times also this is what is going to happen. When you are going to call towards Allah, Then you're going to tell people to connect themselves with Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. To give up sins in their lives. And when you are going to list the sins, then because of the nafs enjoying those sins, the nafs attachment to those sins is so intense that the person will say, you are a madman, you are outdated, you are living in the camel age, you, are, you cannot fit into the modern day society. The verses of the Quran Sharif need reformation and change. And all these things are happening. These type of titles are attached to people who call and invite towards the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So they said that he is a liar. Don't go to him. It's better that you don't meet him and it's better that he doesn't see you. This is what will happen always that don't go to those majlises. Don't go to those bayans. Don't go to those waz. Don't go to those gatherings of that particular person who is on haq. They are not going to say he's on haq. They will say that that person on haq is on batir. And if you are going to go to him, then you will go astray. This will carry on until the day of Qiyamah. <coughs> Because they knew, those people knew very well, those leaders, those rabbis, they knew very well that if only this person has to go and meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if he has to just see once Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, with an open mind, with an open heart, without any prejudice, unbiased then he must get influence and he will accept Islam so the best thing to do is to say don't go near him because he is a madman because he is a, a, a magician or because he is a liar نعوذ باللہ من ذالب چنانچہ اس نے اپنے دوستوں سے دریافت کیا کہ محمد کون ہے لوگوں نے بتایا کہ وہ ایک جوتے آدمی ہے تمہارے لئے یہی بہتر ہے کہ نہ تم ان کو دیکھو اور نہ تم کو دیکھے تب اس نے کہا کہ موسا علیہ سلاۃ وسلام کے تورات میں قسم تم مجھے ان کی کہ موسا علیہ سلاۃ وسلام کے تورات کی قسم تم مجھے ان کی زیارت سے مت روکو تب اس قسم کے بعد ان لوگوں نے اسے سفر کی اجازت دے دی اس طرح ہم گیونگ یو دا قسم آف دا تورات آف حضرت موسا علیہ سلاۃ وسلام دا ڈونٹ اسٹاپ می ڈونٹ پریونٹ می آئی ونٹ ٹو میٹ ہم بیکاز آئی ہیو سین ان دا تورات سو مینی پلیسز مینشن آف ہز نیم So they gave him permission to go to Medina Shaykh. وہ اپنی سواری پر سوار ہوا اور منزل بمنزل رات اور دن چلتا رہا From Syria now he proceeded to Medina Sharif. Day and night he traveled very very eager to meet Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. جب مدینہ کے قریب پہنچا تو سب سے پہلے حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ کی زیارت ہوئی When he arrived at Medina Sharif, on the outskirts of Medina Sharif, the first person that he met was Hazrat Salman Farsi radiyallahu ta'ala on. Salman from Persia. 
حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ چونکہ ایک خوبصورت آدمی تھے یہودی نے خیال کیا کہ یہی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہوں گے سنس ہی ایٹ ریڈ آف نبی علیہ اسلاۃ وسلام جمال ہز بیوٹی نبی علیہ اسلاۃ وسلام کیریکٹر وین سو حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہی سو دیٹ دس از رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فرام دس آلسو وی لرن دیٹ نبی علیہ اسلاۃ وسلام کا اخلاق had transferred so much into the sahaba ikram ridwanullah ali majmaeen that when a person met a sahabi of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam also he thought immediately that this must be rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam subhanallah that was the sohbat and the faiz and the company of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam it was like that rose petals that have been put into that oil that it turns the whole oil into rose fragrant oil the sohbat of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam that fragrance caught on into the lives of the sahaba e kiram radhi allah anhum ajmain usne hazrat salman radhi allah taala anhu se kaha ke kya aap muhammad hain sallallahu alaihi wasallam usse hazrat salman radhi allah taala anhu par giriya tari ho gaya as salman radhi allah taala anhu began to tear when he said that are you muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as salman radhi allah taala anhu began to cry began to weep hazrat salman radhi allah taala anhu soch mein pad gaye aur farmaya ke main to unka ghulam hu i am just a servant and a slave of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am not muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he went into deep thought why یہودی نے کہا کہ وہ کہاں ہے حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سوچ میں پڑ گئے سیڈ ویئر از محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ وزی نے دلیما دل میں کہا کہ اگر کہتا ہوں کہ آپ کا وصال ہو گیا تو لوٹ جائے گا اسے جیو ٹو انفارم ہم دیٹ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پاس ہوئی تھری ڈیز اے گو دس پرسن ول بیکم ویری ڈس اپوائنٹیڈ ایٹ یو مے ٹرن بیک how must i tell him that and if i tell him that come i will take you to meet him then it will be a lie allah now what must i tell him bil akhir hazrat salman radhi allah taala anhu ne farmaya ke mere saath chalo taaki aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam ke ashab se tumhari mulaqat karaun he didn't tell him is there or not there he said come with me i take you to meet his companion He didn't tell him he's there or not there. He said, come with me. I take you to meet his companion. Azad Salman radhi Allah ta'ala anho masjid mein daakhil ho gaye. Waha sabhi ashaab gham mein dube huye the. All the companions. Three days had only passed of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam being buried. They all were in deep grief. They were tearing and they were in meditating upon the passing away of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam yahudi ne majme ko dekh kar ye socha ke inhi mein nabi alayhi salatu wasalam bhi honge to usne zor se kaha assalamu alaikum ya muhammad thinking that among these companions one of them must be muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasalam so he called out assalamu alaikum ya muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasalam thinking that if rasulullah sallam was one among them then he would have replied so then i will ask him for more about islam subhanallah subhanallah ye sunkar ashab be rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam phoot phoot kar rone lage when he said assalamu alaikum ya muhammad Then the companions of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam thought of their meeting Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam every time that they walked into the masjid and they said as-salatu wassalamu alayka ya rasul Allah or they said as-salamu alayka ya nabi Allah or as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah how many times in their lives they were fortunate to say Nabi to meet Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam to shake his hand and to say as-salamu alaykum ya rasul Allah now they thought of their time when he said assalamu alaikum ya muhammad so they could not control their emotion and they began to tear wow. 
ये सुनकर सहाबा फूट फूट कर रोए और पूछा कि तुम कौन हो हु आयु तुमने तो हमारे जख्म को ताजा कर दिया यू हैव मेड अवर वूंस फ्रेश बाय कमिंग एंड सेइंग लाउडली असलाम वालेकुम या मोहम्मद यू हैव मेड अवर वूंस फ्रेश हमने हमारे जख्म को ताजा कर दिया यू रिमाइंडेड ऑफ नबी रिमाइंडेड मी एस ऑफ नबी अलीस्लाम क्या तुम्हें इस बात का इल्म नहीं है कि उनको दुनिया से रहलत हुए तीन दिन हो गए वट साइन ऑफ अ पर्सन आर यू आर यू ए टोटल स्ट्रेंजर डोंट यू नो दैट इट्स थ्री डेज दैट ही हैज पास अवे आर यू फ्रॉम आउट साइड तुम अजनबी मालूम होते हो परदेसी मालूम होते हो इट सीन्स दैट यू आर अ स्ट्रेंजर टू दिस सिटी एंड दैट यू आर नॉट अवे दैट नबी अली इस्लाम इस्लाम पास अवे थ्री डेज ए गो ये सुनकर वो यहूदी चिल्ला उठा हाय हम मेरा सफर असारत गया काश के मेरी मां मुझे न जनती और उसने जना ही था तो मैं तौरात न पढ़ता और जब पढ़ा था तो नात और सिफत रसूल सलासम न पढ़ता इसे इधर हो हाय माय होल जर्नी वेंट वेस्ट आई द माई मदर शुड नॉट हैव गिवन बर्थ टू मी and if she gave birth to me i should not have read taurat and if i read taurat then i should not have read about the sifat of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam because it was after reading of that that i came all the way here aur jab unki sifat padhi to uske baad kaash ke main ek nazar unko dekh leta and he says either i should not have read about him and when i read about him gosh i would have just seen him one glance on the mubarak face of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam phir usne poocha ke kya ali yahan par maujood hai said amongst you is hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala no present isliye ke maine ali ka bhi zikr taurat ke andar paya hai ki wan hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala no have heard of him in, have read of him in the taurat हजरत अली रजी अल्लाह तला ने कहा कि हाँ मैं मौजूद हूं उसने पूछा कि तुम्हारा नाम क्या है हजरत अली रजी अल्लाह तला ने फरमाया कि मेरा नाम अली है तो उसने कहा कि मैंने उनका नाम तौरात में लिखा हुआ पाया है आई फाउंड इज नेम इन तौरात आई फाउंड योर नेम इन तौरात देन आज हजरत अली रजी अल्लाह तला टू तो डिस्क्राइब रसूल आई कान सी हिम एट लीस्ट नाउ डिस्क्राइब टू मी हाउ वज ही what did he look like so there are many hadiths of hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala and others describing nabi alayhi salatu wasalam face and nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's hand mubarak and his forehead but in this hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala no said rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam na bahut daraz qad se na pastaqat neither was he too tall nor was he too short sar mubarak gol tha he had a roundish face पेशानी कुशादा थी हेड ब्रॉड फॉरहेड आंखें निहायत सिया थी हेड डार्क ब्लैक आईज सीने बुए दराज और बारीक थी हेड आई ब्राउज वे वाइट एंड विद थिन लाइन ऑफ हेयर हथेल या पुर गोश्त और नर्म थी हिज द फार्म ऑफ हिज हैंड वे फुल ऑफ फ्लैश एंड सॉफ्ट पैर के तलवे जरा गहरे थे the feet it was deep dono mondo ke darmiyan mohre nubuwat thi and between his two shoulders was the mohar the stem the seal of nubuwat he just gave a few men things of hazrat nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith here we have to also understand one point very very clearly that rasul e paak sallallahu alaihi wasallam was created in the best of moods but allah tbaraka wa taala in the world from the time of hazrat adam alayhi salatu wasalam till qiyamah will create will bring into existence people of different colors different heights different features and all this is allah tbaraka wa taala's artwork yes, and we have got no right to point a finger at anyone or criticize his nose or eyes or ears yes, hazrat bilal radhiyallahu taala anhu was dark he had a flat nose and outwardly he was not handsome looking but his heart was so white and so pure that hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala no used to call him ya sayyidi so it is not the color of the person it is not the height of the person it is not the 
the property and the wealth of the person. It is not the features of the person that Allah Ta'ala looks. أحسن منك لم تر قد عيني أحسن منك لم تر قد عيني وأجمل منك لم تلد النساء خلقت مبرأ من كل عيب كأنك قد خلقت كما تشاء أحسن منك لم تر قد عيني more handsome than you more bet these eyes have not seen anyone and no woman has given birth to anyone with more beauty than you have. خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّعًا مِّن كُلِّ عَيْبٍ You have been created free of any defect, any weakness, any shortcoming. As if Allah Ta'ala created you just as you desired. As if Allah Ta'ala asked you first, how do you want me to create you? And as you desired, Allah Ta'ala created you. So Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he was perfect. In every sense of the word, he was perfect. So that's the Yahudi when he heard this ye sunkar wo Yahudi bola aapne thik bayan kiya he said what you have said is perfect because this is what he read in the Tawrat this is exactly the sifat that he read in the Tawrat ay ali ay sihi naat mein ne Tawrat mein dekhi hai this is exactly the description that I had I saw in the Tawrat kya koi libas aapka mojood hai jis mein soong jis ko mein soongu اور اپنی طبیعت کو تسلی دوں نبی علیہ السلات اسلام اس پاس سے ہوئی بٹ از دیر اینی لباس آف ہز اینی ڈریس آف ہز اینی کلوز آف ہز وچ آئی می سی اینڈ گو سم کانسولیشن ٹو مائی ہارٹ حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے فرمایا کہ اے سلمان فاطمہ کے پاس جائیے اور ان سے کہیے کہ اپنے والد ماجد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا جب مبارک میرے پاس بھیج دے He said, oh Salman, go to my home, tap at the door and tell Fatima, my daughter, to give, wife. my wife, to give the jubba of her father. The jubba of her father, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, send it to me. Hazrat Salman, Hazrat Fatima ke darwaze par aaye aur arz kiya ke ai baab-e fakhr-e anbiya, ai baab-e zinat-e awliya, اس وقت حضرت حسن اور حسین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ باہر نکل آئے اور چیخ چیخ کر رونے لگے حضرت امام حسن اینڈ حسین دیکھیں امام دیٹ ہو از دس ونس مائی گرینڈ فادرز جبا ہو از دس پرسن دیٹ از کم دیٹ ونس ٹو سی مائی گرینڈ فادرز جبا سو دوز لٹل چلڈرن آلسو دیر وون بیکیم فریش اینڈ دے بیگین ٹو کیئر حضرت فاطمہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے فرمایا کہ کون ہے جو یتامہ کے دروازے کو کھٹ کھٹاتا ہے حضرت سلمان نے فرمایا کہ میں سلمان ہوں پھر حضرت علی نے جو کچھ فرمایا تھا اس کو بیان کیا حضرت سلمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ دین ریلیٹڈ دیٹ دس از وٹ از ہیپن اے یہودی ہیز کم فرام سیریا فرسٹ آف آل ہی وانٹ ٹو میٹ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بٹ ہی کن میٹ سو نا ہی وانٹ ٹو سی دا جبا آف نبی علیہ صلاۃ وسلام تب حضرت فاطمہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ رو پڑی اور فرمایا کہ کون ہے جو میرے والد کے جبے کو زیب تن کرے گا پھر جب پورا قصہ سن لیا تو جبا نکال کر دے دیا وین شی ہرڈ فور وٹ اٹ واز ریکوائرڈ شی گیو دا جبا دیکھا گیا تو وہ سات جگہ کھجور کی پتیوں سے سلا ہوا تھا This jubba of rahmatul lil alameen, khatamun nabiyyin, the whole world, the universe that was created for Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam say, if it had not been Allah Ta'ala's will to send Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam into this world, he would not have created the universe. But the jubba mubarak of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam had seven patches, seven places they were patched. حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے اسے لیا اور سونگا پھر صحابہ نے لیا اور سونگا حضرت علی رضی اللہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ٹوک اٹ ہی اسمیل ان ہیل دا فریگرنس آف نبی علیہ اسلاط وسلام جبا بیکاز نبی علیہ اسلاط وسلام ہز پرسپیریشن دیر واز نو پرسپیریشن لائک دیٹ ان دا ورلڈ 
Umm Sulaim used to, when Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam used to get perspiration, he used to take it and gather it in a bottle and just one drop when they used to add it to the best of Itar of Madinah Sharif, it was even more fragrant than that. His perspiration. So imagine the Jubba Mubarak that he wore. What fragrance it must have. Even up till now, those who have got the hair Mubarak from Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the Jubba Mubarak is still in one of the museums in Turkey. And so many other items that were connected with Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam's body Mubarak, the fragrance doesn't go. 1400 years have passed, but you can still get that fragrance in those. Allah. That is the barakat of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam's body. Then imagine the amal which came out of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam's body. If we, because we will not be able to get that kind of a forehead. We will not be able to get those kind, that, the kind of face that Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam had. We will not be able to have the hands that Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam had. We will not be able to have the feet that Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam had. That is Allah Ta'ala's choice, whoever He creates as He wills. But the akhlaq and the mu'amlat and the mu'asharat, the dealings of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the ibadat of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, the zikr and tilawat of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, those things which He gave to the ummah, each and every one until the day of Qiyamah, they can get that into themselves and their bodies will have that same fragrance. It does not mean that that fragrance smell like the Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam's body had. The perfume fragrance. But we are talking about that fragrance will we have, which will have effect on the hearts of people and they will come into the fold of Islam. When we are going to bring the A'mal of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam into our life. So after each one had inhaled the fragrance of that Jubba Mubarak, پھر اس کو یہودی کے ہاتھ میں دیا اس نے سونگا اور کہا کہ یہ کتنی عمدہ اور پاکیزہ خوشبو ہے بیوٹیفل فریگرنس دس جبا مبارک آف نبی علیہ اسلاط وسلام پھر اس نے جناب رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی قبر اطہر پر حاضری دی دین ہی پریزنٹیڈ ہم سیلف ایٹ دا روزا مبارک آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پھر آسمان کی طرف ہاتھ اٹھایا دین ہی ریز ہز ہینڈ ٹوڈ دا ہیون اور کہا اشہد اللہ اللہ پھر آسمان کی طرف ہاتھ اٹھایا دین ہی ریز ہز ہینڈ ٹوڈ دا ہیون اور کہا اشہد اللہ اللہ و اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ He gave testimony that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and Rasul-i Paak is his messenger. Ay Allah, and then he said, Ay Allah, agar tu ne mera islam qubool kar liya, O oh Allah, if you have accepted my islam at the rosa of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, this testification of mine, if you have accepted it, So meri ruh qabz kar lije. Then take away my soul. Because there is no happiness left. There is nothing left for me in life to live for. What should I live for that Rasul-i Paak Sassan has left the world? Ay Allah, agar tu ne mera islam qubool kar liya, to abhi meri ruh qabz kar le. Woh zameen par gira, aur uski ruh parwaaz kar gai. He fell at the rosa of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, and his ruh left his body. حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے اسے غسل دیا اور جنت البقی میں دفن کیا اللہ ان پر رحم فرمائے اور زمرہ صالحین میں شامل فرمائے آمین دس از وٹ وی ٹرم از تقدیر آف اے پرسن اے یہودی فرام سیریا ریز دا تورات ایوری بڈی نوز ہی میز اے یہودی بٹ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ ٹیکس ہم ٹو دا روزہ آف نبی علیہ اسلاۃ وسلام ٹیکس ہم ٹو مدینہ شریف takes him to the masjid of Nabi alayhi salatu waslam and although Nabi alayhi salatu waslam had left the world but Allah ta'ala gives him hidayat and he gives his testification at the power of Nabi alayhi salatu waslam and he passes away immediately after that not one namaz he read in his life not one roza he kept in his life not one hug he made in his life not one zikr and tilawat he made in his life but Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has guaranteed him Jannat. Allah. Guaranteed Jannat. Because he didn't get the opportunity and the time to make any ibadat. Wow. So who can we look down upon? How can we look down upon someone? Yes, we will point out the faults, the weakness, as he was always told, that look, this is a weakness of yours. 
that in the Tawrat when there is mention of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then you should not be tearing up those sections you should have been going to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the people of Haq would have been inviting him to Haq but we cannot say in what condition the death of a person will take place so it teaches us two things many many lessons we can take from this incident but two important lessons that when we hear of an alim of haq when we hear of a person who has got the love of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi in his heart or he is an arif billah and he has come to our country or he has got wilayat he has got the wilayat of siddiqiyah or whatever in your locality or wherever he may be then do not make a raz an al haq don't say that we don't want to go to him why because of this reason and that reason allah tabaraka wa taala will deprive that person then of hidayah that person will go gumrah in this life in spite of his little attachment to deen he can go very far away from deen in later life because of his rejection of a person who is a wali of allah taala this is a very very dangerous trait in the life of muslims today and all of us that we have got this weakness today that many a person is a wali of allah tabaraka wa taala we don't know what his maqam is and what his status is but just because there is a disagreement in some issue or there is a little bit of difference of opinion in some matter then we will distance ourselves from that person's talk and his advices and his nasihat and his majlises and we will think that we are going on haq but the danger is that that wali of allah tabaraka wa taala if he has to just make one ah and we do not know what is going to happen to us we have seen many many people why i am telling you this is that i have got the same weakness so i am trying to reform and change myself and at the same time advising you too that if we hear that there is a wali of allah tabaraka wa taala then if we do not want to attend for some reason or the other it is a different thing but to criticize to mock to make a joke or to backbite of a wali of allah tabaraka wa taala is the most poisonous flesh that a person can eat is the most poisonous flesh eating the flesh of the wali of allah tabaraka wa taala because the flesh of brother muslim is itself so serious Allah Taala says ghibat of a muslim brother when it is so serious that it is as if you are eating the flesh of a dead brother then imagine the ghibat of a wali of allah tabaraka wa taala how dangerous it is but to us it means nothing we are absolutely comfortable with the ghibat of the awliya ghibat of the sulaha ghibat of anybody that we think of so that is one that we do not know the status and maqam of any person here there is a person allah taala had destined that in his latter life towards the end of his life he will get hidayah and hidayah also at the rosa of nabi alayhi salatu wassalam and he will go straight to jannat without making one amal in his life this now teaches us or proves why hazrat maulana ashraf ali thani rahmatullah alayhi so always say ke main apne aap ko sabse badtar aur kamtar samajhta hu yahan tak ke kuffar aur mushrikeen aur kutto aur khinzir se bhi kisi se fil hal aur kisi se fil maal that means not knowing in what condition my death will come so if my death comes on iman then alhamdulillah i am better than all the kuffar and mushrikeen of the world but if it does not come on iman then what so they were fearful of that that on what condition my death will come although they were doing so much of good deeds and there was not a moment they were displeasing allah tabaraka wa taala and there was so much of istighfar and toba in their lives and there was so much of ibadat in their lives but yet they were fearful and if we just read a little bit of the quran sharif we make two tasbih zikr we sit down in some majlis of zikr or we do a little bit of deen work then jannat is guaranteed and we look down upon every other person so hate the sin detest the sin dislike the sin and talk as much bad about the sin as you wish to but separate the person from the sin we will say how can we do that that is the person that's committing the sin yes but that person can give up that sin within seconds yes, sir. Yes. so you can say that that person the sin that is committing is very bad otherwise if you have to look at it 
a person was committing zina, he was going to the gambling dens, he was doing all kinds of haram. Then, then he sat in some majlis of zikr or some majlis of toba or he went in some deen work, he joined the jamaat work or something like that and he changed his life. And he gave up all those sins. Now after he gave up all the sins, did any change come in his physical body? What change came in his physical body? He's still the same person. Now you say this person is a wali of Allah, is a, is a pious person, is a righteous person, is a God-fearing person. So the person didn't change, the person is the same. Is those sifats which were bad, those sins which were bad, he gave up. That is why we are saying that now this person has got these sifats. So detest and dislike and hate and abhor those sins. But we do not know in what condition our death will come, so we have got no right to look down upon anybody. Then if with feeling in the heart, with deep-hearted love and feeling when we are going to give dawah, sympathizing with the person, loving the person, and also desiring for that person Jannah just as we are desiring for ourselves, then see if that doesn't have effect on the heart of the listener. Then see if that doesn't have effect on the heart of the listener. If it doesn't have effect on the heart of the listener, then there is something wrong with that listener's heart. I can't help but repeating, apne dil ko kisi jalte huye dil ke qareeb kar do. कि आग लगती नहीं है लगाई जाती है अपने दिल को किसी जलते हुए दिल के करीब कर दे ये आग लगती नहीं है लगाई जाती है within seconds the flame of fire of the love of Allah tabarak wa taala can light up the heart in the company of the salihin so why did the person is sincere and he is sitting there with an open heart and mind and he also wants to get Allah taala in his life I am very much in need of it. I ask you with sincerely, deep-heartedly, that make a lot of dua for me. That Allah Ta'ala must keep me on Sirat and Mustaqeem, must not cause me to deviate Amen. from now until my dying day. Amen. And Allah Ta'ala must use me for the service of His Deen until the last breath of my life. Amen. Amen. And must protect me from arrogance and from pride Amen. and from all those things that cause destruction Amen. to a person who is a believer in Allah Ta'ala. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا وقصعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اے الله ہمارے ظاہری باطنی گناہ کو معاف فرما ہمارے صغیرا صغیرا گناہوں کو معاف فرما اے اللہ جو گناہ ہم نے دن میں کیا ہے رات کے اندھیروں میں کیا سب معاف فرما اے اللہ ہم سب کو صحت عافیت سلامتی عزت راحت نصیب فرما صراط مستقیم کے اوپر ہمیں قائم رکھ اے اللہ ہمارا خاتمہ ایمان کے اوپر فرما اے اللہ ہمارا خاتمہ کلمہ لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ پر فرما اے اللہ موت کے بعد ہمیں جنت الفردوس نصیب فرما اے اللہ تیری رضا ہمیں نصیب فرما ہر حال کے اندر ایسے عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرما کہ جو تجھے راضی کرنے والے ہو ربنا تقبل منا انک انت السمیع العلیم و تب علینا انک انت التواب الرحیم ان اللہ و ملائکته صلیون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ و سلیمو تسلیما اللہ و صلی علی سیدنا محمد و علی سیدنا محمد و بارک و سلیم سبحان ربک رب العزة عما يصفون و السلام علی المرسلین و الحمد لله الحمد لله we are very fortunate that we have in our presence Hazrat Maha Yunus Patel Sahib, Dhamma Al-Barakatum of Overport and Hazrat Maha needs no introduction so inshallah we call upon Hazrat Maha to come and share with us some gems of advice Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd Hazrat Wala Dhamma Al-Barakatum Ulamai Kiram Respected Brothers, after 
having heard a very comprehensive bayan of our honored and respected guest there is no need for another bayan all that is required is now to implement whatever we have heard in that beautiful bayan hazrat maulana covered various aspects very very briefly but if we have to discuss each one at length then volumes can be written nevertheless i had made it very clear that i am going to be coming just to listen and benefit from this congregation but since i have been requested to say something it comes to mind that hazrat shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai that great wali of allah tbarak wa taala that on one occasion hazrat mufti mahmud sahab rahmatullah alai who most of you are familiar with that great faqih of the ummat who passed away here in johannesburg so he was sitting in the company of hazrat maulana shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai hazrat maulana hakim muhammad akhtar sahab damad barakatuh my shaykh was also next to him and shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai was delivering that some nasihat some bayan some was whilst delivering this talk suddenly he kept quiet he went silent hazrat mufti mahmud sahab rahmatullah alai took one look at shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai then he turned his head towards hazrat maulana akim muhammad akhtar sahab damad barakatuh and said in his ears he said is waq shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai yahan nahi hai so at this moment he is not here after a little while he continued with his discourse in other words his body was here on the ground but we do not know where his soul was that was the kind of ruhaniyat that he had as a shah abdul ghani sahab fulfuri rahmatullah alai when he went to visit shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai then he said i see the noor of allah tbarak wa taala from the ground up to the heavens in the home of shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai i have just given you these two incidents just to show you of what a caliber this great alim was he was a great alim a great wali of allah taala so in one jalsa a darul ulum jalsa as a shah muhammad ahmad sahab rahmatullah alai said besides the many other things दारुल दारूम दिल के जलने का नाम है दारुल दारूम दिल के पिघलने का नाम है व्हाट इज दारुल दारूम दारुल दारूम इज दैट इंस्टीट्यूशन वे योर हार्ट बर्न्स विद द लव ऑफ अल्लाह एंड इज रसूल सल्लम दैट फायर ऑफ अल्लाह तलाज लव एंड इज रसूल सल्लम लव इज इग्नाइटेड इन दोज हार्ट एंड वेन द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दीन वाई इन दैट दारूम दिस इज वॉट दे टेक फ्रॉम दैट इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड दे गो आउट इन टू द वर्ल्ड darul ulum dil ke pigalne ka naam hai it is that institution where the heart melts with the khauf of allah taala with the fear of allah taala and with the muhabbat of allah taala that is a darul ulum there is no doubt that at present there are many many darul ulums that have been established in our country and other parts of the world and each and every one of this darul ulum is a great nemat of allah taala in these times of corruption mischief and fitna these are fortresses which protect the deen of islam the institution caters for large number of students and from amongst them you get a few also who come out like shining stars and then they light up the world with their knowledge from that same darul ulum you get mujahideen from that same darul ulum you get mufassireen from that same darul ulum you get muhaddisin from that same darul ulum you get the sufia from that same darul ulum you get the khuffaz and the qurra so these are the people who will afterwards light up the world something that is very common on the lips of many many people these days i am talking about the general public is look at that darul ulum that student is taking drugs look at that darul ulum that student is in zina look at that darul ulum that student goes to the cinema look at that darul ulum that student was caught stealing so we have to understand one thing that the darul ulum cannot 
change a student overnight. They don't have some kind of magic wand that after we have spoiled them totally in our homes with the television and with the movies and with all our lies and all our corruption and all our haram earnings, then we say send them to a Darul Uloom and they will change overnight and will become walis of Allah Ta'ala. The Darul Uloom will make its effort. Nobody in any Darul Uloom teaches a student to drink or to commit adultery or fornication or to steal or to go and watch the TV and movies. Nobody teaches that. Hazrat Mawlana Ashraf Ali Sahib Tanvi Rahmatullahi's time a student committed a theft in the madrasa. The police had to make some investigation so one of the police officers said that it is very shocking that a student of a Darul Uloom has to commit a theft. Hazrat Mawlana Ashraf Ali Sahib Tanvi Rahmatullahi said no. A student of a Darul Uloom does not commit theft. But sometimes a thief comes into a Darul Uloom in the garb of a student. He was a thief, he came into the madrasa as a, in the garb of a student. So now you don't blame the Darul Uloom for that. In the same way, a student who has had very bad habits at the school and at the college or in his home, and then he has been sent to a Darul Uloom, so we do not have any kind of X-ring machine to check on all his bad habits. So he will come there and he will still continue. But inshallah, if this person pays attention to the lessons and if the ustad is also a sahib e dil, then the life of that student will change. And we have seen in our lives thousands of such students how they have become leaders of community and how they have become mufassireen, muhaddisin and they are muballighin and they are doing excellent and sterling work all around the world. So we do not have to lose hope if we look at some people indulging in some kind of sins. Yes, every effort will be made to bring about some kind of rectification. But my message is to the general audience that is here that it is our duty as parents, those who are parents, that we have to create that environment at home. Until we do not create that environment at home which is conducive to practice upon what they have learned at the madrasa, we will not get the desired results. These students, they spend a whole year sometime outside their home, far away. And when they return to their homes, straight away they are confronted with the same evils which they will which they had left and gone to the Darul Uloom. Now they are faced with the same music, they are faced with the same television. We get reports. A student from one of the Darul Ulooms, a girl, a Muslim, one of our girl students from one of the Darul Ulooms, when she returned home, now she writes that at home the music is so loud, the television is playing. When I tell my mother to switch off the television, or I ask her to lower the volume of the music. They said, you mind your business, you go in that room and read your Quran Sharif if you wish to. Now what is, what kind of an environment are we creating in our home? I went to one home some years ago, I will not mention the place and the person or anything of that nature. A little child came, he said, Molana, this is my son and he is doing hives of the Quran Sharif. He said, MashaAllah, how many paras he has completed? He said, so many paras he has completed. Who is his ustad, so and so? So I congratulated him. And then when I picked up my eyes, I see his Quran Sharif is kept on the television itself. That half is his Quran Sharif after he comes from Madrasa. Now he keeps it on the television itself. There was a TV there and it was on that. Ah, can you just imagine? So brothers, we have to understand one thing very clearly. That it is not a joke. There is no need. There is a great need for all these type of institutions. But we have to also give them the support and the backing. We have to create that kind of a home environment. So that they become practical. Ilm, every person who has got ilm. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, all mankind is at a loss. They are facing destruction, illa al except those people who have got knowledge. 
And then even those who are ulama or those who have got knowledge, they are also facing destruction, they are at a loss. إِلَّا الْعَامِلُونَ Except those people who are practicing on that knowledge. And then even they are at a loss, even they are facing destruction. إِلَّا الْمُخْلِسُونَ Except those who practice with great sincerity on that knowledge that they have gained. And then Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, وَالْمُخْلِسُونَ عَلَىٰ خَطَرٍ عَظِيمٍ And even those who have got ikhlas, they are on very slippery ground as we may term it. That they have to be very, very careful that shaitan and nafs does not hijack that ikhlas. Suddenly riyah comes into action. So it gives me extreme pleasure, great pleasure to be in this institution and at this jalsa of theirs at the termination of their kitabs for this year. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala give this institution great progress. And may it produce the mujahideen, the muballigheen, the muhaddisin, the mufassireen that the world is thirsty for. And then together with that, as Hazrat Dhamud Barakatum mentioned, that it is very, very important that we also spend some time with those who are the Ahlullah. We must not think that the world is empty of them because Allah Ta'ala has said, Kunu ma'as-sadiqeen, so these people will remain till the day of Qiyamah. We will have to search for them. nigah e wali ki ye taasir dekhi nigah e wali ki ye taasir dekhi badalte hazaron ki taqdeer dekhi This is the taasir and this is the effect of the eyes of the ahlullah that the taqdeer of the people Allah tbaraka wa taala changes jis qalb ki aaho ne dil phoonk diye laakho jis qalb ki aaho ne dil phoonk diye laakho اس قلب میں یا اللہ کیا آگ لگی ہوگی میں اللہ تبارک و تعالی گیو می گیو یو این دی انٹائر امت دی توفیق اف عمل میں اللہ تبارک و تعالی ایکسپٹ آل دی سروس ان دی خدمت دی دی پرنسپل دی اساتذہ ان آل دوز وی اسسٹڈ ان ہیلپڈ دس مدرسہ اللہ تعالی مس ایکسپٹ دی خدمات and reward them with the best of rewards in dunya and akhirat wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin jazakumullah khairan wa ahsana jaza may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq of implementing within our lives the golden advice that we receive from mawlana tam al barakatun may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant mawlana yunus sahib tam al barakatun a long life with afiyat And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him complete shifa from all sicknesses and all ailments and grant him a speedy recovery and keep him with good health. <laughs>